Number 67. Why are elementary reactions involving three or more reactants very uncommon? Okay, so in order to answer this question, we just have to get, uh, you know, bypass some definitions, right? What is an elementary reaction? Well, if we say that a specific reaction is an elementary reaction, that means that it is very basic, right? Not that, you know, anything elementary is basic, but in general, right, elementary school is the first basic, uh, you know, schooling that you go to before middle school and high school and college. So an elementary reaction is only a single step. It's very, very, you know, quote unquote basic. It's a single step reaction. Now there could be multiple elementary steps that will bring together one big balanced equation. But if you're classifying an elementary step, it is only that single step. And that's it. That's all you got. So in this case, let's pretend that this is an elementary step, right? It's a single step that involves the combination of carbon monoxide, which is CO, coming together with O2. And when carbon monoxide comes together with O2, we get a well, I guess we'll put a, a red C in the middle with the two O's over here. And that's CO2 plus a oxygen, right? A lonely oxygen. Okay. Now, in this case, if we did want to, um, you know, categorize what type of elementary reaction this is, this would be classified by how many reactants you have starting off. And in this elementary step, I see that I have one reactant, right? Carbon monoxide coming together with another reactant. So the combination of one reactant plus one reactant, you have two total reactants. And the two total reactants in chemistry, that translates to the term bi, right? Bi in chemistry means um, two. So this would be classified as a bimolecular reaction. If you have only one uh, reactant breaking apart into two different products, that would be a unimolecular reaction because you only got one reactant. But in this case, the one that I pulled up is a bimolecular reactant. But now the question's asking for, well, you know, why can't we have three or more reactants coming together? Why are those very uncommon? Your unimolecular reactants or reactions and your bimolecular so either having, you know, one reactant or two reactants, they're pretty common. But if you start adding three different reactants, and I guess we'll classify this as A plus B, we'll do it in boxes, right, plus C, and you bring them together and you make this giant blob, right, you know, uh, you get some yellow layered with some green layered with some blue <laughs> what whatever it is but basically this would be a tear molecular react reaction where you have three different reactants coming together this is tear molecular and the idea here is that why these are very uncommon and maybe I'll just say that we make a b c why these are very uncommon is because the probability of having these three molecules, and maybe what I'll put is, you know, we'll put this one at, at the bottom. We could rearrange this a little bit. The probability of having these three come together at the same amount of time and clash, right? Kind of like these two guys. They have to have the perfect orientation with the perfect amount of energy for all three of them, they have to come together in a specific orientation to make your product. That's not very, you know, probabilistic. So in this case, why is it very uncommon? Because there is a low probability. It's all about, you know, how likely these this reaction is going to occur because there is a low probability for all reactants to come together 
to, uh, we'll say with the proper orientation and energy. Because this is all going back to your collision theory. So if, if your reactants are coming together and they don't have the proper orientation, they don't have the, you know, enough kinetic energy to, you know, get up to at least your activation energy, that reaction is not going to happen. But if you, you know, dial it down a notch and you have two reactants coming together, it's a higher probability that they're going to be in the orientation they need and they have the proper amount of energy. And with a unimolecular, when you only have one reactant, that's the highest probability because you only got one reactant. So that's the answer for this one. The more reactants that you involve on an elementary step, a one single step reaction, it's not really probable that all three of these are going to be in their perfect orientation. They have enough energy to make that product. So that's it. And that's the answer for this one. I hope this helped. Let me know uh, what you think in the comments. I love talking to you guys when I can in my free time. And I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Always keep learning. And thanks for coming to the channel. Thanks for supporting us. And we'll always support you guys, okay? So good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'm always rooting for you. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.